All right, hey everybody, Evan here from devasun.com. And in this video, we're gonna be covering how to create a Visual Studio Code extension. So luckily for us, Visual Studio Code has some pretty nice and easy to understand documentation on how to create our first extension. So the way we actually build our extension is by installing a package called Yeoman, which is a scaffolding tool used to build all the files and folders that we need for Visual Studio Code extensions. And then with Yeoman, we can actually use their VS Code extension generator so we can have Yeoman build the specific files that we need to run the extension. So let's go ahead and copy this command right here. All right, so I opened up our terminal here. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that command like so. And then we're gonna give it a sec to install the packages. All right, so it looks like we finished installing that. Now we're gonna to need to run yo space code. And now here it's gonna walk us through a couple of options here. So it's gonna ask us what kind of extension we want to create. So I'm gonna go down to this one right here that says new code snippets. All right, and now you're gonna get this visual that pops up and here is where we can decide what kind of extension we want to create. So let's go ahead and go down to new code snippets so we're going to create a code snippets extension for vs code and it's going to ask us for a folder name to import to or just have it empty if we want a new folder i don't have a folder currently so i'm just going to give it nothing and we're going to call our extension basic snippets and now we need to create an identifier for our extension so this is going to be all lowercase and i'm just going to name it basic snippets and here now it's gonna ask us for a description of our extension. And we're just gonna say a collection of different HTML snippets. All right, and now here it's gonna ask us for a language ID we want this extension to be associated with. As you can see, this is a basic snippets extension for HTML snippets. So we're gonna say HTML for our language ID because this extension is gonna be associated with HTML. And here it's gonna ask us if we wanna initialize a Git repository. I'm gonna go ahead and say no on this. And now we can see that your extension basic snippets has been created. So let's cd into basic snippets. And then you can run code dot and we can open up Visual Studio Code and look at all the folders that's inside. So now that we have Visual Studio Code open, let's look at what was generated for us. So we have a dot VS Code folder here. Don't have to worry too much about this right now. We have a snippets folder and this is going to contain all of our snippets that we're going to add in just a second here. We have a VS Code ignore file and this is just some backend stuff for VS Code to ignore certain files. Not really that important for us right now. But let's take a look at our package.json. And here we can see a section down here called contributes. And here we see a little object here called contributes and it contains a snippets array. And this snippets array is how we lay out different snippets for different languages. So here we can see we have our snippets for our HTML and we route that path over to our snippets folder and to this specific JSON file right here. So say we wanted to have snippets for JavaScript, we could do language, JavaScript, and then we can set the path to snippets, and then maybe we create a JavaScript dot code snippets and we can do that by going to the folder and creating a new file however we're just going to work with html but just in case you wanted to add multiple language supports you could 100 percent do that but for now we'll just stick with html so let's go ahead and go to our snippets file here and now we're going to create our first snippet all right so when creating a snippet we're going to need to do a couple things so first we need to specify the name of the snippet so we can just say basic html table and now this is going to be an object and in this object we're going to have a couple things we're going to have a prefix so we can just call this prefix let's say basic so b for basic and we can say html table now of course you probably want to try to keep this as short as possible but for now i think this works let's go ahead and add in our next property here which is going to be body and this is gonna be an array of strings. Now, each string in this array is going to be a line inside of VS Code. So let me show you what I mean by that. So first, we're gonna create our table. So obviously, we have the table tag here to open up. And then next, we're gonna have the content within our table. And let's go ahead and create a table row. So we'll do the table row opening tag here. And then now we're going to need our table data elements within our table row. So we could do TD 
closing TD tag and we can just say Apple. And then let's go ahead and copy and paste a couple more of these. So we can do Apple, Grape, and Orange. And now we're gonna need a closing table row tag. So we do this and a closing table tag like so. So if you're not understanding what's going on here, each of these is a new line in VS Code that we are outputting to. And now that we have this, let's go ahead and add one more property here, which is the description. And we're gonna say basic HTML table. Before we test this, I'm gonna add a icon to our extension so that way it's easy to identify it when we actually have it in our VS Code. So to specify an icon for your extension, all you have to do is just drag in an image that you want to be your icon. In this case, I have icon.png. And then we need to add a value to our package.json. So we can do icon and we can specify that to be the name of our image which was icon.png so we can do icon.png and the only reason we're getting a little squiggly underline here is because it wants us to specify a repository for HTTPS protocol, which we don't have a repository. So this isn't really important right now, but if you do create a repository, this little warning should go away. So just to show you, if we do repository and we do the basic repository setup here, we have the URL and that just goes to any GitHub repository, we can do like devsend. And you'll notice that once we have a repository actually initialized with our project, that little error goes away on the icon. If you don't have a repository, there's nothing really to worry about. All right, so now we're ready to actually test our extension. So in order to do that, we're gonna need to put this basic snippets folder, which is the folder we created for our extension here. And we need to drag that into our VS Code extensions folder. That way we can access it in our extensions. So if you're on Windows by default, it will probably put your extensions folder somewhere in your C drive under users, under your user, and in a folder called .vs code. So again, if you have it set up by default, this is where it should be. Uh, if you have it specified somewhere else, I probably can't help you because I'm not sure exactly where you installed it, but you just want to look for this .vs code folder, okay? Because that's where it's going to hold your extensions folder. And then you're just going to want to drag in your basic snippets folder or whatever you named your project. And so basically you're just going to want to grab that project that you just created and you're going to want to paste it into this folder right here as you can see it's saying this actually can't be formed because you have a file open in another program so i'm just going to exit out real quick and then we'll try again and now it dragged it into our directory here so let's go ahead and reopen visual studio code and here I just have a blank HTML file that I created. Now let's go ahead and look at our extensions on the left-hand side here. And if we look at our extensions, we go down to the bottom here, we can see basic snippets. So this is the extension that we just created and we can see our logo that we have here. Of course, when you actually publish this, you'll definitely want to change this to look a lot nicer and more accurate to what your extension actually is, but we're just testing it. So we're not gonna worry too much about the readme and all that. So let's go ahead and actually try this snippet extension out. So if you remember, we did the prefix with B for basic, and then we have the HTML table. And of course you can see basic HTML table as the description. So here you can see how that JSON snippets file that we created translates into the actual working extension. We have the prefix here and the description that we set. And now when we actually hit enter, or if I just click on this, you can now see the table in that body array that we created in that snippet snippets JSON file. So we just have a table, our table row, and all of our table data in that row. And so that is basically how you create a snippets extension. So now let's create an extension that has a command that will copy our current document to our clipboard. Now I know this is kind of a pretty useless extension, especially if you know keybinds with the VS Code, but I'm just gonna create this extension as an example, just to show you how you can create a command for your VS code extension. So once again, we're going to create a new extension here. I'm going to type yo code and I'm going to go new extension JavaScript and we're going to call this basic commands and we'll just go with basic commands as the identifier for our extension. And we'll just say the description is basic commands for VS code. And that's going to ask us do we want to enable type checking in our JS config.json. We're just going to hit Y for that. And do we want to initialize a Git repository? We're going to hit no. 
and we're going to use npm for our package manager right now let's cd into our folder here and we can open up this folder by typing code space dot all right and we have a couple new things over on our sidebar here so let's take a look we have our extension.js our js config.json the most important thing we need to take a look at is our extension.js and we have a couple things here i'm going to get rid of all these comments and we're just going to go down the line here. So the first thing we have is our const VS code require VS code. And then we have our activate function. Now this function is going to be where we house our commands after our VS code extension is activated. So right here you can see when it activates, we have a default console log saying congratulations, your extension basic commands is now active. And we have a disposable variable here. And we're setting that equal to VS code dot commands dot register commands. And you can see we're registering a command here which is called hello world. And inside this command, we are executing this line of code here, which is VS code.window.show information message. This is just that little pop up that you see at the bottom right. So when this command is ran, it will show this message on the bottom right of our VS code editor. And then lastly, here we're just pushing our command that we just created to our commands. So this is how VS code is going to register our commands here. And last Last couple things to look at here is we just have a deactivate function and this is a function that is ran when the extension is deactivated and we have our module exports where we're exporting our activate and our deactivate all right now let's take a look at our package.json and this is pretty similar to the snippets package.json but there is a few changes so let's go over those first thing we see here is activation events and this is how we actually activate our commands so whenever we create a command here like we're creating this one hello world we have to add that to our activation events and this is so vs code knows to activate that command and the way we just activate it i'll just retype this here we want to do on command and then command id so here is going to be our extension name which is basic commands dot and then the name of the command that we had, which if you remember is hello world. So we do dot hello world. And that is how you activate a command. And now we need to make sure that we have our commands in our contributes object here. So you can see that they already added the default command already, which is basic commands hello world inside this commands array. If we wanted to add another command, then we have to make sure that we add that right below here and then just you know do the same exact thing that we did up here and of course if we add another command then we have to make sure that it's in the activations events here and besides that there isn't really too much difference from the other package.json everything else is pretty standard and self-explanatory so now let's go ahead and try running this command and making sure that it works so if you remember the title for this command is hello world so we're going to go ahead and save that all right so now we just need to drag this folder this basic commands folder that we just created into our extension of VS Code. So again, by default, you want to go to your C drive, users, your user, and then you're going to want to go to .VS Code, your extensions, and then we're just going to want to drag this folder into your extensions folder. All right, I had to close VS Code once again in order to drag this basic commands folder inside of the extensions directory. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and open up VS Code, and we're just going to create a new file. It can be any file. And I'm going to type whatever, just test, it's fine. And then we can do Control Shift P to open up our commands here. And we want to look for the command, which I believe was called Hello World. So if I type Hello World, we can see that command from our extension is here. So if we go ahead and click on that, we're going to see the little pop up here that says Hello World from basic commands. So now we know our extension is working. So let's go ahead and edit it and add our own command to our extension. All right, so we have our extension open. So let's go ahead and go to our extensions.js and we are going to create another command. Now I'm actually going to change the variable of this from disposable and we're just going to say hello world command. And then here we're going to change this to hello world command and now let's go ahead and add another command so to do that we do it the same way that we did it here we're going to say let and then we're going to create a command that's going to copy the text of our document so we can say copy text command we're going to set that equal to vs code dot commands 
register command. And here we're gonna call this basic commands dot copy text. And now we're gonna need a function here. So we're gonna say function, do the curly braces. And now here's where we're gonna actually have all of our logic. So again, this command is going to copy the text of our editor and store it in our systems clipboard. So in order to do that, we're going to need to install a library. So I'm gonna go up here, we're gonna to go to new terminal. And here I'm just gonna say npm install. And this package is called clipboardy. And now we should have that package installed. So let's go ahead and grab that. So we're gonna say const clipboardy equals require clipboardy. So now that we have that package, we're gonna to need to grab our editor so we can get our text from our editor. So I'm going to say const editor equals say VS code dot window dot dot active text editor. And then lastly, we're gonna do clipboardy and then we're gonna use dot write. And this is basically saying whatever we pass into right here is going to be written to our clipboard, which means that when we paste something, it's going to paste whatever we put inside of our rights here. So we wanna get the text from our open text editor here. So we're gonna say editor, which is the variable that we just created here, dot document dot get text and this is just going to grab all the text that's in the current editor that we have open when we run the command and then lastly we want to make sure that we're pushing this copy text command so to do that let's just add it to our context.subscriptions.push so we're going to do comma and then copy text command and we're almost done, but we have to do one more thing. We gotta go to our package.json. We have to make sure we add that command to our activation events. So we're gonna say on command basic commands dot copy text, which if you remember was what we named it right here. And then we just need to add it to our commands. So let's do this. We're gonna say command basic commands dot copy text and we're going to set the title of this to be copy document text and just for testing purposes i'm going to go ahead and add a little information window just to show us that we are successfully running this command so we're going to do vs code dot window dot show information message and we're going to say successfully copied text all right, everything should be good to go. Hopefully there's no errors. If you were editing this extension in the folder outside of your extensions folder of VS Code, then you're gonna make sure you want to redrag that folder in and overwrite the existing one. But if you were editing this extension inside your extensions folder, then you're just gonna to wanna to reload your window, which is what I was doing. So I'm gonna do Control Shift P and we're gonna type reload and reload window. All right, now if I open up a new file and we can see this little message here that's saying extensions have been modified on disk, please reload Windows. So we'll just go ahead and click that. And I'm gonna hit no on this. So now if we do, let's just type something. This is an example of copied text. And I'm gonna do Control Shift P and we're gonna do copy document text, which is the command that we created. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And we see successfully copied text at the bottom right here. So let's go actually make sure that that worked. So if I were to come down here and hit control V, you can see that it copied our text that was here originally. And that is how you create a extension with commands for VS Code. I hope all this made sense. If this video helped you out, please leave a like and subscribe if you want more content like this. But that's gonna do it for this crash course. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.